Hey there, folks. It's the Mad Hatter, also known as Mike, with the General Bean. I'm going to teach you how to make a phenomenal needle felted mushroom shirt. Oh, okay. I'm new to the live broadcasting thing. So I just got distracted by somebody joining the, the, pre, the, the video feed. So, again, we're going to be doing a needle felted mushroom today. That includes the stem. Going over how to do, how you can string it up so that it can actually hang like a, an ornament. Um, just so you know. And I guess that, that's about the, the introduction. We're going to be using a whole bunch of fiber. If you have fiber of your own, um, that's great. We're, I'm only going to be using probably about a half of this. Um, but if you don't have fiber of your own and you want to do this kit, we will have it for sale on our website very shortly. Um, so again, yes, I'm going to take about half of this and rip it in half. We never use scissors on, on fiber. Never, never. We never use scissors. <laughs> Just kidding. We, we sometimes. Some sometimes use scissors. And oh right, sorry. Here I am doing something down here. I forgot we don't have like the, the two camera view. Um so I'm gonna uh tilt this is old school. <laughs> I'm gonna tilt the camera down. And there you see the rest of my tie. Phenomenal tie. It's uh, made out of uh ripped up fabric just like what is tying my hat together. And we're going to roll this up. So what I like to try and do when I'm rolling this up is uh, I try to use the friction of the pad that I'm working with to tighten the roll as I go. It helps um, to speed up your felting process. So you can not, you don't have to felt as much. So I'm tucking it in as you can see, I'm sort of tucking the sides in, and then I tuck the, the, the roll in, and I pull it. Didn't I turn it? Basically, I'm trying to roll a ball. It doesn't have to be a ball. It can be an oblong. It's just going to end up being whatever it ends up being, really. But... The needle felting process is where we actually do all of our shaping, or at least that's where I do all of my shaping. And I don't want to tell you where to do your shaping because that's up to you. So as you can see, it's kind of tight through here. It's kind of loose here, loose here. And that's all good, all good, all day long. Take my needle and I start, I just sort of, just tacking things down. I don't really worry about a whole lot of stuff. I just, or like shaping, I just tack it down and I continue rolling the same way that I was before. So that's keeping the roll up nice and tight. And yes, I, I like to use the term roll up because that's homage to MC Escher, in my mind at least. And we just keep on going. And there, I've reached the end, pretty much. And that's tightened. That's pretty tight. That's the way that I like to do things. Or the way that I like to do my, my needle felting. And as you can see, I've kind of gotten it, gotten it roughly shaped out already. And I just keep going. And one thing to remember is that this is just the core. We're making the core of the, the mushroom over which the red is going to be placed. And because color fiber can be harder to source out, we try to use it sparingly, whereas the cream fiber and the natural colors can be a lot easier to source out, so you can use it more willy-nilly. 
I'm going to come up here. I've, I have decided that this is going to be the bottom and this is going to be the top. So I just start. And excuse me, this is my first time using this multi-pass. We do have multi-passes for sale in our store. If you missed it, we are, I'm the, with the general bean. Our sale is going to be next Friday. That's when our live Wafa sale is going to be. So you might want to put it down in your calendar. It's 12.30 Mountain Time. So that's kind of early in the day. Not ultimately early. You don't have to set the alarm, I, I hope. I don't. I'm usually up a lot before that. And Jamie's up way before that. So it's noon. We'll have lunch together next Friday. How's that sound? And I just keep going around. And the multi-pass helps me speed up the needle felting process. Again, it's available on our website. Hopefully the lighting is good. Are you able to see things? Because that's one thing I my nerves didn't get me to check the lighting. There we go. And now flip it over and felt the bottom. And it's just felting it into a flat surface. That's all we're doing. Now, if you want to make it bigger, this is kind of looking a little small to me, comparatively speaking. Yeah, it's not that bad. You can always add extra fiber on the outside and just felt it on. So before you add the red, if you want to make it bigger, go for it. Make a nice big red speckled mu mushroom. Now, what I try to do is I try to make it a little bit of an indentation. That's me. You're going to hear me say that a lot. This is what I do. Everybody does things differently. As Perzig said in the novel, The Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, if you follow the rules and the, the uh, instructions, there are a million ways that you can go wrong. If you follow your heart, you'll never go wrong. You can guess that he was kind of an inspiring, inspiring author to me. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So what I tend to do now is I make a little ridge around the bottom. So what I'm trying to do is sort of sculpt it. If you take a look, you might be able, you might be able to get the good angle. So you see how it sort of, it comes around and then I sculpt it in and then it comes out. That's just my thing. That's the way that I do it. So, you know, I'm not really going to stop doing it. So to start that whole process going, I just felt around like this. And it gives me a nice little ridge. And the ridge, I like having the ridge because when you look at the mushroom like this, you've got the whiteness right there. And the red just basically goes up to the top edge of the ridge there. And away we go. And back to the felt. Nice little ridge. Happy little ridges. That wasn't a copyrighted thing. Copyrighted saying. There. So there we you can you should be able to see that I've put the ridge right there. Yeah, I can see it there in the, in the camera. The next step to add the red and and really it's just pull as much as you want off it uh, you don't really want to pull it thin because what's going to happen when you pull it thin is that you're going to uh, when you felt it down the white is going to show through so that means you just have to add more red but as you can see I've kind of got almost like a straight edge here so I can take it and I can lay it up like this. And again, I just tack it down like that. 
and then roll it around, tack it down. Keep rolling and tacking. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, because I'm not really paying attention to the comments, um, I am going to be doing this pretty much like at my pace. So it's not, um, uh, you're, you're going to be able to just go back and watch the video anytime you want. Um, but I've, I'm going to just keep on going and, because we also only have a half an hour. If I had a class, a full class time, it would be different. I think I got all my talking points in already. I feel very alone in a way because I, I can't see the, the comments and I, I, I don't hear anybody. When, when Jamie's teaching the, the, the Zoom classes and when I've taught Zoom classes, I always hear interaction. And this is the, the weirdest aspect of what I'm doing right now is that I don't hear any interaction. <laughs> Except the dog barking across the street. There we go. And so there, you see, all I've done is really I've just gone around really quickly and tacked it down so you can see that it's just it's just like little bits here there and everywhere I'm not really worried about finesse right now because that's all I want to do I want to get it lined up so I want to put the the fiber where I want it to be and then I can fine-tune it as I go on and the direction of your needle We'll, we'll fine tune it in one way or another. Here I go. When I'm doing edge work, I generally use one needle. And generally, in, in all of my needle felting, any edge that I do, I just go around really quickly and just fire off so that the fire it off like this so that it just tightens up just a little bit. And the, once the edge is nice and tight, I can pull out the multipass and go to town. But even with the multipass on the mushroom, I'm not really going to be that concerned about getting it perfect. I want it to be kind of fluffy. A lot of the times when I'm doing needle felting, I, uh, I tighten things up really, really tight. So when I, when I start and finish a piece, it's generally very, very solid, almost like that. Um, solid bit of felting. But with the mushroom, I generally leave it a little bit fluffy. The biggest thing that I really pay attention to is that I don't want any of the white to show through the red. That's because we're going to add cream after we get this all done up. You can tell that I'm concentrating because I'm not talking. And if, you, if you watch my needle felt, you'll notice that I'm not going very deep. I'm only going to about there. If you can see that. That's basically two barbs in. One and a half to two barbs. And that's, that's all that you really need to do. You don't need to felt all the way through. The shorter your movements, the easier it is for you to control where the needle is going. So that means that if I'm coming in at, an, at, a, at a sideways angle, I know that it's not going to go through and into my hand. But also, if you're, if you're going all the way through, it's a lot of energy that you're expending. Oh, I see some uh, thin patches. 
And adding fiber to make this bigger is the same way as, as cleaning up the thin patches. Thin patch and an overlap. So I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but I can see it in this light. Right here is a bit of an overlap and it's a bit thin. So just take a little bit off. If I need to make it bigger, I'd take more than this off. And why did I cho choose to put the fatter side up there? Because I don't mind it growing this way. I don't want the side to grow outwards. And then add it in. And again, it's just um, tacking it down quickly. Like that. And a lot of the times also, if you do see that you have a seam in between one fiber and the or one layer and the other, crossing over the seam can blend the seam out. And yeah, I do that a lot. There, that's all started to finish it off. I don't have very much to do here because it's just a very little bit of fiber that I added. Happy red fiber. Reminds me of a sunset, not really. There we go, and voila. Now, as you can see, we got all these little white dots. So that's the next step that I do, is I make the white dots. Really simple. Put all of this over here. It's just, I like to do things ahead of time, so if I'm doing one task, I like to do it if I'm going to do one task many times, I like to do that task all at once. So I pull out the fiber. Jamie uses a good word. It's called drafting. It's when you're pulling it across like this and you're pulling it along the fibers. When you're doing this, you'll actually see the fibers and how they're aligned all in one direction. So you're pulling it off. You just pull off a little bit like that and then There's one, and I do this about uh, 18 times, I think, three, four, five, six, if you need to see how big it is again, it's really small. It starts off Where's the camera looking? That was weird. Okay, so it's really small to start with, and it gets even smaller when we felt it onto the mushroom cap. Where's the one? Halfway there. Yeah, it should be good enough. And then the way that I put them on, I have a pattern that I do. Um, and, and I always see extra areas that I want to finish up needle felting. So I, I just pick this up and I start felt, felting away. Um, I have a pattern and I just um, add one in and as you felt the, the fiber into that one spot, it turns into a dot, just like that. So again, my pattern is I go on a diagonally, diagonally wise row. So I go up, I go from one up towards the top, and I'm just felting into the center of the dot. And then once all of the fiber is in, I felt around. I'm going to do another one right up here. Thank 
keep that back there and I'll show it to you this way. So as you can see, I just go up like that. And then I go there, 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 then there, there. And I just keep doing it all the way around. You can come up with your own pattern. You can have big dots, little dots, it doesn't matter. You can have them evenly spaced. You can have them anywhere that you want. And this is just a lot of dots, helping in a lot of dots. I guess I didn't even follow my own pattern. There's a seam. So I, I don't know if you were able to see that seam. It's right here. I can definitely see it. So I go across the seam. The heavier part of the seam that I'm working on right now was actually on this side. So I, I sort of extend the seam over this way. And that's just a personal thing that I like to do. I don't like to see heavy seams. That's just where fiber, fiber was added to fiber or whatever. We've got a few left over, a few extras, put a couple on the top. And there we go. Now is the time to add the stem. And if you've tried any of our classes, you'll know that this is a great way to make sort of a fiber log. And yeah, I'm going to go with this side because I don't want uh, the color. I want the that. And I'm going to pull off about that much. And again, no scissors. <laughs> so the trick that I saw Jamie do the other day was turning it into a pancake. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Felt it down onto the pad, pull it up, flip it over, felt it down onto the pad, pull it up, flip it over, felt it down onto the pad. Right now we're starting to get more like a fabric. It's one second. Pliers. This is an example of why you always want to try hard to find your needles when they break. Breaking needles happens all the time. That was a tip of a needle that I was pushing against right there. Anyways, back to the, the pancake. <laughs> so we had a little housekeeping there. But now, Back to the pancake. We have it off of the pad. It's got a little bit of um, substance to it. It's been compressed a little bit. And then we just do like we did with the, the original ball, except roll it in a log. So we tuck it against itself and pull, pushing, like we pull it towards ourselves using the, 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 the pad as friction. Just keep going like that. Rolling it up. Once we get it about well, to, to where we want it, we can needle felt it. Now, for me, this is the softer, fluffier side, so I'm only going to needle felt it to about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and needle felt this, and then I'm going to flatten that end down. There's a seam there, and I just needle felt it down and flatten the end down. Okay. 
And again, I'm only going a few barbs in because I don't really need to worry about going all the way through. That's kind of the kind of why I hold my needle this way. When I'm dealing with one needle, I prefer to to hold just the bare needle. That's me. That's the way that I do things. If you can tell me I'm doing it wrong, I won't change. And we just keep going until we get a nice log. And yeah, there there is a song that that relates to the concept of log, but I won't go over it. It's from a cartoon, an adult oriented, not not adults, comic cartoon, but it's a it's a cartoon aimed at adults. It was Ren and Stimpy. And we just keep going. And the stem itself probably won't get as tight um, as the, the, the mushroom itself. But it's getting pretty good. I can feel that the, the needle itself is having a harder time penetrating the fiber. And I just tighten it up again at the bottom. And I'm holding it way up here, and I'm only going in that far. So I'm putting the needle again only in that far, and I'm holding it way up here because I really, really don't like getting poked in the fingers with needles. It does happen all the time. Doesn't mean I'm getting used to it. There. So I've felted up to about here. Here to here is nice and soft. Plush. Plush. So I just pull it apart. Just like that. There we go. As Jamie says, frequently fiber will only felt down to a certain point. So that's why we want to leave this nice and soft so we can pull it apart and felt it into the bottom just like that. So I just hold it like that and I start by felting the the fiber, the, the loose fiber, spinning it around. Felting it in. have a mushroom. It's not a magic mushroom, but it's a mushroom. Done deal. Now, for those of you who want to string it up like this, you only need to find whatever suitable string you want to use. We got this at, uh, I don't know what it is, it's just cotton string. And then you use the darning needle, thread the string through the darning needle, push it through, all the way through. And you might have to bend the stem down so that you can pull it out might help to have a pair of pliers handy so that once you get the tip out you can just pull it out like that you don't pull the strip thread all the way through sorry no i've got that backwards i'm sorry you start at the bottom that's right start at the bottom pull it out the top so it's kind of like the blowhole pull it out make a loop push it back down pull it through and if you want you can tie a knot and then you can take some of your extra fiber that's sitting around 
and if you want, you can needle felt it over top of where the knot would be. So you can't see where the knot is. So it's kind of like a secret, just like that. All right, that's 30 minutes. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. I've been, oh, here, I'll go like this. There we go. I've been the Mad Hatter. It's been a half an hour of needle felting mushrooms. I'm with General Bean. Again, one more time. We are going to be live uh, one week from today, so next Friday, at 12.30 Mountain Time. If you're familiar with UTC, that's UTC minus 6 for us. Now, that's where we are, and it's 12.30 uh, we'll have uh, kits for these toadstools. Uh, we're also going to have a ton of other fiber and other kits and other tools that you're going to want to have. It's been a great time. It's been weird, but hey, I'm the Mad Hatter. What wouldn't be weird? Have a great night. Bye-bye.